Hey there, this is Larry Ludwig from Investor Junkie, today reviewing Mint.com. I got a question for you. How do you manage all your finances today? I mean, if you're like anyone else, you have a boatload of different accounts. How do you manage your credit card? How do you manage, uh, you know, with that, your bank statement from your Bank of America account, let's say? How do you manage your mortgage? If you're like anyone else, you have retirement accounts. And in addition to that, you have to manage your car. How do you how do you manage all this in one location? Previously, you would have to have a program like Quicken, or, or even worse yet, you'd have to use a spreadsheet. How do you do that nowadays? Well, Mint.com might be that solution. Let's take a look at what Mint.com looks like. Okay, so here we are at the overview screen of Mint.com. You'll see here there's a whole bunch of accounts already been set up ahead of time. This is just demo data that uh, Mint.com supplied to me. Uh, but one of the beauties of one of the beauties of Mint.com is it allows you to really manage uh, your finances in one central location. It really makes managing finances simple. And in this case, they have some demo accounts uh, for Wells Fargo, Citibank, a few credit cards, you know, some loans, investments, and you can even enter some property if you want to manage, say, your house. Uh, but if you were to do this yourself after signing up, you would have to enter your login information, say, for Wells Fargo. And on a nightly basis, it would actually download that data to mint.com. And again, the beauty of it is it's all in one location. And with that, you can then get alerts for, say, you know, if you're, you're getting close to your uh, due date on your credit card, uh, mint.com can send out a notice saying, hey, you need to make a payment before it's due. And not only that, but it can do things such as rate changes. And I'll show you in a minute how where you can manage that data. Uh, but the other aspect of it is it allows you to uh, manage a budget or create a budget. So let's say, for example, you want to watch your spending on groceries. You can do it through this website and track it on a monthly basis. Uh, the other thing is set up goals. If you want to set up a goal for, say, retirement or, say, your child's co college education, you can do it through this website as well. Um, okay, let's go to the transaction section. Transactions are downloaded and categorized on a daily basis. This is one of the great features of Mint.com, but also can be the most frustrating. Sometimes the importing of financial data just stops working, and the categorization can be less than ideal. Let's say, for example, you went to Shell, did not buy gas, but instead got an oil change. Mint.com does not know the difference and puts the transaction in a category it thinks it's most appropriate. This may or may not work well for you. If not corrected, it can also affect your budgeting and trends within Mint.com. So let's take a look at this example here. Shell is a, listed as gas and fuel. It's obviously incorrect, so I need to manually change it. And again, while it's not difficult, it does take some time. And especially if you have multiple transactions, it can add up. So let's say, for example, you make a cash transaction. There's no way for Mint.com to automatically get that information. So you must make a manual entry. You do it for the, this button at the very top of the page. While it's easy, it does take some time. Again, it's another thing you have to do. So let's assume in this example, I went to the drugstore and bought some Band-Aids. So let's assume we did it today, June 27th. Type in Band-Aids. The categorization is going to be under health and wellness, health and fitness, I should say. And it's going to be pharmacy. And let's assume it was $5.99. That's pretty much it. So now it's now entered into your uh, transactions. And it will get categorized within your budget and your trends. Budgets give you a bird's eye view of your spending habits. Find out if you're spending more money this month on dining than previously. You can also make adjustments to your budgets from this web page. So let's say, for example, you want to spend a little bit more money on fuel. You can up it here uh, by adjusting this accordingly. The other aspect of Mint.com is their trending area. Trends allow you to get reports of the different spending habits over time. The trends section allows you to answer questions such as, am I spending more money than last? Or where did I spend the most money? It shows you you spent more money in May than you did in June. But also let's find out, let's break it down where we spent the most money. In this example, obviously the person's a shopaholic. Perhaps the most powerful feature within Mint.com is their alerts. You can get alerts when, say, a bill's due or a rate change on your credit card. Uh, you can also get it for uh, late fees, 
if you're over budget on a category, bill reminders, or uh, large purchases. And not only that, but you can get weekly email summaries. You can not only get these alerts via the website, but also by email and SMS text message. There's also available smartphone apps for your iPhone and Android, as well as Apple's iPad. They not only alert you of your spending habits, but you can also gain access to the same features available on the desktop web browser. Now, the most common questions I get related to Mint is how does Mint.com make their money and is Mint.com secure? Let's tackle the uh, how do they make their money first. Mint.com is free to use, does not charge anything for their service. What they do is what they do offer is an area called ways to save. And upsell you at various points within the website. So you may get alerts saying American Express is offering a better credit card than what you currently have or you paid $10 in checking fees last month, and here's a list of lower-priced checking accounts. If that doesn't bother you, you'll be fine. Just be aware of how Mint.com makes their money. Now let's talk about security. The nice thing is your financial information is stored in one central location. The downfall is your finances are stored in one central location. Granted, the information on Mint.com is read-only, so while a hacker can't transfer funds out of, say, your checking account, it is possible if they were to log in to see what your spending habits were. I recommend using a strong password with their site and giving out your password to no one. The good news is account data is not stored within Mint.com servers. Mint.com is also backed by Intuit. Intuit has been in the financial software industry for years and also is the makers of Quicken, TurboTax, and QuickBooks. So they have a long history of security and their site should overall be secure to use. Quite frankly, as someone with a background in computer security, I'm more concerned with a user's desktop computer than Mint.com's service. Now, as I first stated, Mint.com makes managing your finances simple, but it's really only good if your finances are simple. Mint.com is great for budgeting, but poor for investing. Personal capital is an alternative I recommend on my site, as it's more geared towards investors. Worst case, you can sign up to both, since they're both free to use. Automated downloads and categorization within Mint.com can be a hit or miss. It can be very useful, but it also can be very frustrating. If you have any questions or comments about this review, please make them at the bottom of the page. I've also included a link to sign up to Mint.com and links to Mint.com review on my site and personal capital as well. If you like what you see here, go to my website and sign up for my newsletter. You'll get more investment reviews and tips on how to make you a better investor. This is Larry Ludwig for Investor Junkie. Have a great day and I'll talk to you soon.